Hi, everybody. As promised, here is uh, part three of my World War III uh, webinar. Um, you know, I'm going to keep channeling as it comes in, and I got a major awareness this morning that I really wanted to share with you. Uh, thank you guys so much for, you know, uh, watching the first couple of ones that I did and being a part of that Q&A. That Q&A was crazy awesome. Great questions, you guys. Really enjoyed being a part of that. And where we are right now <clears throat> is we are at a very crucial time in history. We're also at a very crucial time of the ascension. We're also at a very crucial time with you individually creating your own reality. And I kind of get, I have to give you a little bit of a backstory as I kind of go into this to let you know how I kind of got to this place of awareness this morning. And I woke up this morning and um, I was dreaming that there was a cockroach infestation all over me and in my home and I could not, I couldn't get them off of me. And it really, it really bothered me because two other times in my life, when I was a little small child, probably ages, I don't know, three or four years old, we were very, very poor. And we lived in an old hotel. Might have been a little older, maybe five. Uh, we lived in this old hotel anyways, and beds were on the floor and it was infested with roaches. I mean, you'd wake up in the morning or wake up in the middle of the night and they would be on you. They'd be crawling in your ear, they'd be crawling on you, they'd be all over you. And it was one of the most disgusting, terrifying experiences of my childhood, okay? And I remember like that after that, I would just get the EVGBs around any type of bugs that I would be around and it just really bothered me. Long story short, grew up, created a, a very abundant life for myself, created my online academy, created, you know, a global awareness of myself and was in 130 countries broadcasting live. And I was, I was looking for a new home at the time and I got us a new home and we moved in and about two and a half weeks later, this big, beautiful house in a very predominant neighborhood of, of you know, Kansas City. We move in, we settle, walk into the kitchen one night, turn on the lights, and the kitchen's infested with cockroaches. Um, at, the, at the particular time of my life, I was going through a, a huge amount of shadow work, even though I was coaching and teaching and, and doing all these things, I was, I was going through a really dark year. It was like 2016 and, and a lot of my relationships were falling apart. Um, you know, marriage was falling apart. Um, you know, my identity of myself, I was questioning, should I even be teaching? You know, I was really struggling. And then the, the, the cherry on the, you know, the ice cream was moving into this house that I could barely afford at the time. That was too big for us. And it was infested with cockroaches and there was nothing that we could do. I mean, there was no exterminator that could come in and get to the root. They were like, they're in the foundation. Like, like you're going to have to just do whatever you can do to kind of like keep them balanced. Like you're never going to get rid of these. Like that's what we were told through these exterminators. They were so bad. And for me who teaches in metaphors, I was like, what is this? You know, I'm feeling this like childhood terror all over again. You know, I'm like wondering if they're on my son while he's sleeping. And, you know, I wanted to move, but we were stuck in this house. And it was, it was a lot of, um, it, it was a lot of terror, right? This, this entire year. And, you know, fast forward, I, I dove into a, uh, a workshop that I created called the Becoming the Real You. And I isolated for 90 days and I dived down deep into my subconscious. And I cleared out a lot of crap that was in there. And I worked on myself and I limited toxic relationships. And I really, you know, I healed the toxic relationship that I was having with myself. I took responsibility for a lot of areas in my life that I was neglecting. Um, I had to let, make a lot of, you know, uh, rights that were wrong. I had to clean up a huge amount of my life that I was kind of pushing away. So it was really a powerful year, even though it was a very dark year. And moving forward, I never really have had any problems since then. That was 2016 with any sort of like bugs or anything like that. And, and this morning I wake up and I mean, it felt so real. You guys know what it's like, these dreams that we've been having lately. It, it felt like they were like all over again. It felt like I was 35 years old 
and you know, I'm back in that house and they're all over me and there's nothing that I can do. And I literally woke up gasping, like, right? And I sat up and I went, okay, three times a charm, right? I gotta look at this again. Like, what is this this time? You know, because I am not that state of being anymore. And I wasn't as terrified of them. It was more of like annoyance, like, ah, this again. I was I didn't have that deep terror that I had inside. And so I sat up and I thought, oh, I must be getting a download because, you know, my reality kind of works in metaphors where I'm always learning something through a metaphor. So I really sat with it this morning and I went into my daily routine, which is, you know, moving my body and then going into a deep trance hypnosis of, of you know, my inner, my inner workings and a deep state of meditation by asking myself certain questions. And that's kind of how I like. I kind of pull in this ability to channel is I ask and it's always given, right? So my my team, the higher self, you know, the Galactic Federation, they show up and they're sitting around me and I began saying, what does this represent? And they begin giving me these amazing understandings of what is going on right now, especially where we are right now with everything that's happening. It's Never have it has it ever been so transparent that how infested this planet is with this energy of the cockroach, right? It's like we call them dark seeds, we call them dark shadows, we call them dark workers, we've called them whatever, we call them demons, we've called them whatever. This kind of this battle that we're up against. But really, when I saw this symbology of the cockroach, they showed me what a powerful reference it is that we're facing against right now. So the idea of the cockroach is that their life expectancy is that they can almost survive anything except being like stepped on and squished, right? <clears throat> um, they can withstand huge amounts of toxins. They can live up to 14 to 25 days without a head. They most of the time recreate or repopulate before they will actually give up their life cycle, which means they will pop out a bunch of eggs before they drop dead, okay? So their life expectancy of the roach can pretty much outlast and outsurvive atomic war, you guys. Like if the world ended in atomic war, roaches would be here. That's how their vitality is in being able to survive. And the very idea of them is how fast that they breathe and how fast they move and when they scurry from the light, it was very kind of very transparent of what we're up against right now. And the thing that they wanted me to understand about this idea of the cockroach, especially where we are right now, is we're becoming aware of a lot of disgusting truth. We're becoming aware of how infested this planet is. We're becoming aware that it's been in every home, it's been in every school, it's been in every church, it's been in every office, it's been in every, um, you know, every space. It's been in everything that we have done. This roach mentality, this dark mentality, and there's no way to get rid of them because they're constantly breeding, right? They're constantly tripling they're they're shape-shifting they're here they're there it's like you turn on the light you go to reach for it it's gone and then one's over here and one's over there and it's very kind of it's it's very metaphorical of of the roach itself and the the idea that they were trying to get across why they showed me the stream this morning was that our approach is you know going around and destroying the dark is going to go against who and what we are on this planet. Because let's look at this dark energy from a level of higher awareness. Like let's let's bypass how we feel about them and go a little bit above it and look at it as a form of consciousness that is kind of the walking dead. I mean, this this dark energy is technically the walking dead because they need your life force energy to sustain themselves. And in order for them to live, they need to eat, just like the roach, right? Even though they can go dormant and they can hide, they can survive that atomic war, right? They will find energy in the pain of it. They will find a way to recreate themselves in the, in the, in the 
the threshold of it. And you know, spending five minutes on Facebook, you can see a lot of pissed off light workers, right? You can see them. I can't believe this is happening to our children, and we've got to kill all the pedophiles, and, and we got to do this, and we got to take our power back. And and I'm going to tell you guys right now that this is a game of frequency and vibration, and the way that the dark has been able to sustain and keep this planet enslaved for so long is that whether you're pissed off or scared, it's food, it's vibration, it's lower vibration, it's you being in a lower frequency that emits an energy that is food for this dark energy. So whether you're disgusted, you're pissed off, you're enraged, you're scared, you're terrified, you're just, you know, you're um, bewildered, you're confused, your heart is bleeding. Like that's all lower vibration, guys. And I know it's coming from a good place. I know, just like, you know, trying to set traps and catching cockroaches is coming from a good place. You're trying to purify the space. But let's look at how incarnation works. Let's look at the idea that if I go out with a gun and start killing pedophiles, then what's gonna happen because they are the walking dead, that the only thing that they're going to do is incarnate as fast as they are dead in a baby body, in a baby body somewhere on this planet, which means, which means that they're going to disappear for 14 years and come back exactly like the cockroach that can live without a head for 14 days, they're gonna come back at their second seven year cycle when they reach that sexual peak and they're going to become a pedophile again, except we don't have a record of them now because they are lost in the incarnation system. They're the walking dead. They don't return to source energy. They don't, they, they don't go to redemption. They don't work it out with their spirit guides. They don't sit and contemplate their wrongdoings. They reincarnate very quickly so you guys this is probably the most important important message that i've ever given ever what we actually have to do is we have to understand that all darkness wants to be caught there is a secret 911 call 911 is going to be a very important number this year there's a very important 911 call coming from these dark spaces within, okay? These dark seeds carry a call within themselves. You guys, think about it. Why would pedophiles make baby toys that tell on them? Like these baby toys that, you know, you dunk in cold water, which is another reference of cold-blooded, which is walking dead, when you put them in cold water, and their eyes are all big and puffy, which what a child looks like when it's being molested and raped. And these dolls are for sale for our toddlers. And when you dunk them in cold water, they're displaying images of pizza and bondage and lingerie. If they did not want to get caught, you guys, they wouldn't be putting the 911 call into Disney movies. They wouldn't be putting the 911 calls in the emails that are traceable. They wouldn't want to put the 911 calls in the toys. So you're like, this is disgusting. No, it is a asking for help. It's like, I am sick. I want to return to God. I can't. I'm too lost. I'm too far gone. Someone has to help me. This is the ultimate Christ conscious awareness, you guys, is that the dark is asking for help through these metaphors, through these toys, through these movies, through these, through, through this behavior, through these pictures, through this, through this collections, through these trophies. They are asking for help because if they really didn't want to get caught, you guys, let's be honest, they wouldn't be making it so obvious. I mean, let's look at this. And more and more and more obvious is going to come out because underneath all of their lost souls and the walking dead within them is a 
please, a 911 call, please help me save my soul. I can't do it by myself, but I can make a toy and tell on myself and I can put the power back in your hands and you as a light worker who can share your light and give me enough love in my heart to spark my consciousness so I can return to source energy and I can work this out with God. So I can work out my redemption, so I can work out my karma, so I can go back home and I can sit in the discipline of my behavior and I, from a loving space of source energy and Christ consciousness and God himself, itself, right, can help me. So it needs to be us helping our lost brothers and sisters who have been caught in this dark space for so long, enslaving the planet because that's all they know how to do. It is going to require us to see their call for love and see their call for help, okay? Which means the things that you are so disgusted by were once done to them. They wouldn't be the monsters that they are if, they're, if they did not learn that somewhere. Our job as the Christ consciousness, as the second coming, as love, is to see past the roach and look at what it could be. And if I could send love to the darkest parts of this planet and they could receive it, which they will, then their soul, which is a, a candle that has been blown out for millennia, probably maybe thousands of years, we can light that candle within them by seeing past the pain and the disgust and the, the crime and the injustice and the mutilation and the, the sacrifices and the, the pain that they have caused. And we can see that they could be good if they could be loved back into wellness, into harmony, back into vibration. So what is it going to take for us to stop and move out of that lower vibration and move into a place of love for us to see them? Because the idea of the cockroach is the idea of the infestation of this energy on this planet, okay? And within that, there are a few different metaphors that drive us crazy and we overlook all the time that are perfect metaphors of what is happening on this planet. Since this is the living library, there is a micro to every macro. And the micro of, of this dark energy is the cockroach itself. Another symbolic figure within our awareness is the mosquito. They gently, quietly land on you, suck your blood without your awareness, Steal your vibration, your life force energy, possibly poison you, and live to breathe again when leaving an itchy, uncomfortable mark on you and you not even know because you're at the lake, right? You're having a great time. Those are the two metaphors of what we're kind of up against right now. And we're squatting them and we're putting essential oils on them and it only keeps them away for a certain amount of time, right? And then they come back because they are breeding as quickly as we are killing them, right? We're like, we should kill them all and lock them up. I'm gonna tell you, that puts you in a lower vibration that actually resembles hate. And hate is fear and fear is grief and grief is loss of connection source energy, all right? So obviously I woke up and I was like, okay, I get it. I get it, there's an infestation. And you know what, since we're in the fifth dimension now, Mother Earth has turned the lights on and it's just like walking into a kitchen and turning the lights on at night and seeing all the cockroaches scurry underground, underground, right? In the pipes, in the walls, they're listening, they're waiting, the dark lights are off, they're all around, lights come on, they hide, okay? so right? This is the analogy. And so when I woke up, I felt very disempowered. Now, I took the I am workshop, 
And I know that when I am disempowered, I am actually in a lower vibration where I am giving my energy away. I am incapable of creating a new reality when I am disempowered. My only instinct is to defend myself. And when I defend myself, it's like I want to take my power back through aggression. I want to take my power back through killing. I want to take my power back through, you know, making someone else feel disempowered. I want to disempower the roach so I can empower myself. Or, or, so as I sat with myself, I said, I am ready to move into the quantum field of possibilities and understand what my true power is here. Because obviously, it's like the Avengers Endgame, if you guys saw that movie, it's like at the end, it was like, there's no way they're going to survive. There's like, you know, 10 Avengers, and there's like millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dark energy just swarming the planet. And you're like, we are outnumbered. I mean, if you really knew, if you really knew, we are so outnumbered. I mean, for every light worker, there is, you know, for every one light worker, there is 100,000 dark seeds. There's so much darkness on this planet. And some of it hasn't even come into puberty yet. Okay? So, I got to make sure I get this right because it was very amazing. So, I did my, I, I went into my I am training and I said, what is my true way of empowering myself here? Because I cannot fight for peace. I cannot kill for love. I cannot, I cannot, you know, I cannot act in a lower vibration and expect a higher vibrational result. I have got to align with this. I've got to understand this. And so I got this message very loud and clear when I moved out of the problem, guys. When I moved out of the problem, I got the solution. And the solution was, it's time to scramble the airways. Take a breath. Just feel that for a minute. It's time to scramble the airways. So if this war is being fought with frequency and vibration and mind control and the symbols and the addictions and the avoidances that you are most programmed in your codependency of are being used against you to manipul manipulate and control you, then your only hope, our only hope on this planet is to raise the vibration past the lower scales and scramble the frequencies that are bombarding us, okay? So we are going to scramble the airways. Now, one person in alignment with love, and I don't care what it is that you're thinking about that gets you into that state. I don't care what it is that you're focusing on or meditating on or singing about or dancing on or light languaging on. It doesn't matter. If you can focus on love and you can project that. That's what I was trying to communicate in Second Sunday. If you can project that one of you affect 750,000 sparks. So you can, with your tiny candle, you can light 75,000 dark seeds candle, which means their spark comes back on and they become a vibrational match to source energy and they can return home, which means they're going to stop incarnating. They're going to stop the resurrection of the dark process. They're going to stop the journey of this, this, you know, walking dead. They're going to go home because the ascension is about going home. It isn't about us going, wow, that planet sucked. I'm ready to go back to God. It is about us bringing our brothers and sisters that have been so lost and so disconnected for millions of years back into alignment where they can get a ride back to source energy. They can be seen by spirit again. They can be welcomed home to go through all of the things that they need to go through to amend themselves, to work on their karma in the spirit realm. Because the spirit realm sees no judgment for their dark actions. It just needs to be love that teaches love. And healing that teaches healing. So we are going to scramble the airways. All right. And this is how we're going to do it. And here's how you're going to really understand your worth because you don't need anything outside of you. You don't need money in the bank. You don't need a talent. You don't need anything except right here. Your love for anything. You're going to drop into that heart space and you're going to project anything and everything that feels like love through 
some sort of echo. You're going to bust it out, okay? So you're a light worker, right? You're a guide, you're a guardian, you're a star seed, you're whatever, you're a code writer, you're an earth keeper, whatever you're calling yourself, you have amazing potential inside of you. And you need to drop into that space. And you need to say, I am love. And you need to shout that out as loud as you can in whatever metaphor that you feel safe doing. So let me give you some options because I wrote them all down because I felt so empowered by this, this conversation. Um, all right. One of the ways that you can scramble the airways of this negative frequency and vibration, okay? If they can survive an atomic war, then they can survive any negative energy that you put into the world. Now, if you put love in, right, love is going to light their candle and they're going to combust from the inside and they're going to return to source energy. Okay, we are literally going to blast them from the inside with love and light and they are going to go boop, like boop, right? And they're going to go home. They're going to go back to source energy. So, Whatever language of love that you have, the language of love is what you're going to project. Now, your project is very important because your field needs to be at least six foot out. Three, six, nine, okay? So your field needs to be out six feet while you're doing this. So dancing, singing, coloring, painting, uh, meditating with color, meditating with crystals, setting intentions, imagining them going home, imagine them reconciling with God, your light language. You guys out there that have light language coming out of your eyes, I want you to get over yourself and make a video and look dead into the screen and talk for three minutes with your field out six feet because you're in love with something. You're in love with the idea of what this planet can do. You're in love of sending all of them home. You're in love with your children growing up in a safe space where we don't have to worry about them being taken. You're in love with the fact that you love. You're in love with the beautiful things about this planet and its nature and its animals. You're in love with something. Project it out. If you speak the light language, project it out. Okay? And consistently you guys that doesn't mean your hour of meditation when you wake up in the morning and you send love to all the dark and you you know you you do your little meditation and you play with your crystals and then you get on facebook and then you're like pissy for 12 hours because of what you're seeing that is not scrambling the airways scrambling the airways is putting a consistent vibration of love or above into the collective all day long all day long now we are asking you to do this for 30 days because at your 9-11 date will be the, a huge fork in the road for you to, based on your personal vibration. So your personal vibration will either create a shortcut disguised as a negative to cue forward or you will step into the logical next step of your next manifestation because you're already vibrating love. If you're not already vibrating love, you will create an experience for yourself. And there's a couple of different probabilities. One probability is there's going to be a mass shutdown that's going to be uh, either weather induced or um, some sort of explosion induced um, uh, story that's going to shut down your stock market. This is going to affect your real estate. This is going to affect your bank. This is going to be a fast forward shortcut for you to wake up out of your codependency of the matrix and stop being part of the problem and be a solution and reconnect with your divine self, which is your true abundance and your true of freedom and your true wealth, right? You will create that for yourself or you'll create some sort of weather situation that will cause you to move within. You will create something that forces you back to love. Whatever that's gonna take for your personal experience, your higher self will orchestrate with your, with your divine spirit friends and that will be the reality that gets you into this space that I'm asking you to willfully go. If you willfully go right now in the next 30 days while your planets are in retrograde with Uranus, that's going to shift everything upside down and expose all of the roaches and amplify your mosquitoes, you need to be like the spider. 
The spider is one that creates its reality every day. It builds a beautiful new web and that web takes care of the, it, it, the spider throughout the day. It's the abundance of its food. It's the abundance of its creativity. It's its art. It's its song. It's its vibration. And when that day is done and the spider decides to be something new, the next day it becomes a cobweb. And it is now ready for the spider to make a new reality each and every day. So you allow yourself to be who you need to be every day and be like the spider. Because the spider is creating its own reality through the web that it creates. And anything that gets trapped into the web is on the spider's turf and it has to deal with the spider. So create your six foot webs. Take your masks off when you don't need to wear them. Sing, tone, speak, look, dance, be kind, okay? So I wrote down a whole bunch of different ways that you can scramble this frequency because you're being controlled through your mind and frequency and vibration in everything, in your water, in your food, in your atmosphere, in your friends, everything, okay? So dance, kiss, laugh, draw, appreciate nature, clean your spaces, declutter your spaces where darkness lives, detox yourself, repair yourself, repair your home, repair your relationships, fast. Um, Fast social media that you can afford to, high vibrational music, light language, kindness, creativity. Find and be with the child within. Do your shadow work. Find a new way to be creative. Find a new way to express your six foot energy field out with love. Fall in love with something. Fall in love with something every minute. Yoga, exercise, sending the world love bombs. Plant those love bombs, fill them with love and drop them in underground. Do your meditation space. Imagine the world you want to see. Imagine as if, imagine it's complete, imagine it's done. Forgiveness, forgiveness to the person who hurt you as a child. Forgive yourself for hurting the child within. Forgive the monsters that are hurting the children. Forgive all of the monsters of this planet. Forgive the cockroaches, forgive the mosquitoes. Okay? Find your inner bee, your bumblebee, your bee that is the essence of frequency and vibration, that is the most essential creature on your planet. Without this creature, you do not eat. So celebrate and be like the bee. It's the state of being that you're in. It's the ability to fly when your wings can't support you. It's the ability to nurture everything around you, create a healthy, unified support system of other bees and create a hive that nobody wants to mess with. Create a life source energy that can sustain millions of years and keep its purity. Be like the bumblebee, be like the spider, create a new reality every single day. Come on. Okay, create a new house for yourself to live in, a new body, a new home essence. Change things up, recreate yourself, and just create the new version of yourself. Work on your lower frequencies, play the duality game. What is the other frequency of anger? What is the other freak of hum frequency of humiliation? What is the other frequency of fear? What is the other frequency on the other side of a positive spectrum? And play that game out every day. Live in a state of abundance and grace and forgiveness. Be kind when you don't need to be kind. Be graceful under pressure for those that are angry and bitter. Don't let them bring out that bitterness inside of you because then you lower your vibration and you become a vibrational match to the very essence of why we came. And we came to love inside pain. We came to love even though we're terrified and disgusted. We are here to send our brothers and sisters back to the light for this ascension to be complete because we don't go home until they go home. We will move into a six dimensional state when we take responsibility for our own personal realities here and clear the shadows and darkness that resemble the seeds within, all right? So this is my third message for my webinar. Hopefully you were able to take the metaphors, 
hopefully you were able to see through some of the things that you may have been stuck in and hopefully you will use your six foot projected field of light to make the loudest noise and scramble the vibration that is bombarding this planet in last efforts for us to be enslaved once again. We have the power. If I can project love from a six foot field, I will be able to send 75,000 dark seeds home to be reconciled with God. That is how powerful I am. And I do not need a degree and I don't need any money in the bank and I don't need a partner to be worthy to do that because that is what I came to do. And that is my message today because love wins on the other side of this. This is the formula that we have all been looking for and to look at the analogies and the beautiful creatures as symbolic messengers to us of exactly how we should be acting, right? The cockroach, the mosquito, or the bumblebee and the spider. Who do you choose to be, right? I put this in your hands now and I feel complete because from a place of disempowerment this morning, I found resolve in the quantum field and decided that the way that I took my power back is to empower others. So this message is for you today. And I hope that you have the most amazing day ever. Shift a little bit of your perspective and be the change that you wish to see in this world. All right, guys, until next time, see you soon.